When I was in my 20s, around the same time that I was in college and really started learning how to cook, I started losing my vision. What happened is I have an autoimmune condition uh, called NMO or neuromyelitis optica that affects my optic nerves and my spinal cord. Within a matter of, I would say, two or three days, everything below my neck was paralyzed completely. It really took me about nine months of recovery from you know, doing a lot of physical therapy, occupational therapy, that um, I was able to fortunately recover from that, but my vision still kept deteriorating. So it was these really big life changes that took me out of the corporate world and I had to leave my job at that time and just really take care of my health. And I think being at home a lot and having a lot of time to think and not really knowing what is expected of me or where my life is going, it really put things into perspective. And I, I thought, you know, I'm not really happy doing what I was doing in the corporate world. It's not for me. And I just really thought about what I really do care about. And for me, it's relationships with other people, with my friends, my family. It's food, it's living life and experiencing it with other people. And it's writing, it's reading, it's words, it's literature. So it put me in a different direction in my life where I just wanted to focus on things I really cared about. When they were casting for MasterChef, I didn't really, you know, at the time I wasn't really watching much TV because I had lost my vision by then and so TV wasn't really a part of my life. But my husband is a really big Gordon Ramsay fan. And so when we heard that they were doing a casting call um, and auditions for it, I thought, well, why not? And at the time I was actually in a creative writing program getting my master's in creative writing. So I thought, okay, well, I was just, I'm just gonna go on this show and then, you know, not make it very far because I'm sure everyone's phenomenal at cooking and I'll just do my best and then just bring back some like good stuff to write about, whether it's like fiction or like nonfiction. I thought, okay, well, I've made it this far, but surely everyone's gonna think I'm just here as a gimmick. And I think a lot of people did. They thought I was just there for ratings. They just thought, you know, I was hired on to, as an actor to make, I guess, to raise the stakes on the show. And so, it, a lot of people had taken me aside and asked like, so, you know, who's gonna, who's gonna cut your food for you? Like, are you just gonna stand in, on the sideline and tell them what to do? And I'm like, no, I'm gonna cut my own food. You know, I know how to use a knife. It's, it's you don't have to have your vision to, to use a knife. You just, it's everything is by touch. I started realizing as the show progressed that I'm a very competitive person by nature. And so the closer I got to the end, the more I wanted it. And I just really wanted to prove to myself and to the world that anything is capable, regardless of where you've come from, what challenges you've faced, uh, what sort of a hand you're dealt with in life. And so I think I just really put all of my effort and energy into trying to attain that. I feel like I'm a very compassionate person and I really want to, um, I guess, really show other people like what sort of a life they can live. I think what I've learned over the past few years since winning MasterChef is to be a role model, um, you do have to kind of think more about what you do and what you say, but at the same time, I think you really have to be true to yourself. And you can't please everybody in this world, and that's something that's um, everyone has to remember. You know, it's, it's hard because I'm such a people pleaser and I really try to make people happy, but in the end, like, you have to realize that you can't make other people happy unless you're happy. I think a campaign like this really helps uh, Asian Americans find their identity and who they are and be proud of it and at the same time know that they don't really have to answer to their heritage and they don't really have to answer to what it means to be an American American or whatever it is that they define, define it as. But I think there's a way to just be yourself um, and know your heritage, know where you are now, and that in itself, I think, by itself, um, is enough. For me, social media is at least one of the few things that offers uh, a way for me to stay completely connected and true to my fans and my supporters, because it's you know really me tweeting, it's really me uh, blogging, it's really me on Instagram um, and on my Facebook. And so sometimes I receive uh, really awesome messages from people who said that um, because they've watched me on TV, they've decided to try out for the soccer team. They've decided to um, do something about their depression. They've decided to um, open up um, a lavender farm because it's their dream. When I hear these sorts of messages or get these sorts of uh, emails from fans and supporters and that tell me how I've specifically made a difference in their lives, it really 
um, helps me to keep going. And then I think it really helps me to see the bigger picture and know that, okay, why I'm doing these things is to really help these other people. And that's the main thing. It's like, I love cooking and I love writing, but why do I love it? It's because it helps me connect to other people and helps their me help them make their lives better. Hey guys, so as I was telling you before, I... Hello? Yo, Ryan, this is Randall. Randall who? Of Randall Park. I know you didn't ask, but I came up with some nicknames for you. Yellow Mamba, Sriracha. But it'll be like, Sir Racha. Jessica Gomes. You mean Australian, Portuguese, Chinese, Sports Illustrated swimsuit model Jessica Gomes? Whenever she comes by, it's like bubble guts. Hey, Steven. Hey. Well, hold on, I'm on the phone, so. Ten. Remember when you asked to be about my skin regimen? Feel my feet. I no, seriously, it. feel it. That's mighty close. No, wow. really. Okay, that's perfect. Honey, I can't find rubies. Just thought I'd try something different. This is a date. This is not a date. This is a date. Hey, sorry I'm late. <laughs> what are you guys doing here? It's like an episode of the Dating Game. I'll be a cape role model. Awesome, thanks man. Right on. Hey, what exactly do I have to do? Just be yourself. Cool. Do I have to wear pants? Can I be a role model? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I'm serious, but okay. Do what you love. It is super cliche, but I went through it. I went to college originally for nuclear medicine. Yeah, right? No, people don't even know what that is. Every time I call my dad, he's like, go do law school. It's so easy. <laughs> law school is not easy, man. Like, um, I can't do that. My mom, she wanted me to be a doctor, of course, but deep down, my passion was always art. We need to be more proactive. Asians need to step up. I mean, it's time. Hi, I'm Lisa Ling. You have to check out this campaign. It's at im-campaign.com.